Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. We start out this evening with the candidates vying for the 18th Senate seat. We'd like to meet those candidates right now. We begin with the incumbent Democrat, Lisa Boscola. Thanks so much for being with us again, Lisa. Hey, it's great to be here. And her Republican challenger, Matt Connolly. Hello. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. We always like to start off by getting a chance to get to know you a little bit better. So let's begin with our incumbent. And Lisa, tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Well, this is my third term that I've been in the state Senate. And I've been that solid, independent voice in Harrisburg, just fighting for, I think, what's right. Uh, I have a 50% um, voting record with the Democrats and the Republicans, which is unheard of in Harrisburg, especially in these times. And I want to go back to Harrisburg and continue fighting for property tax relief that I started many years ago when I asked and forced the governor into a special session on property tax relief. We have tough economic times now. We need solid, strong leadership to make things happen for the Lehigh Valley and Pocono area. And on a lighter note, I have two cats, Turbo and Trixie, and a loving husband. So it's all good. Thank you, Lisa. Matt, you're a newcomer to the political scene. Yes, Help I am. people get to know you a little bit. Well, my name is Matt Connolly. I'm 44. I moved to the Lehigh Valley to uh, pursue a career in professional auto racing, which I have achieved. Um, I'm running for office because I'm tired of complaining. I'm tired of watching businesses leave the state due to high regulation, high taxation. Uh, I'm a business guy who's been in business as part of the racing world for over 20 years. Uh, I've been able to make a profit every year in a business that is very difficult. And I think what Harrisburg needs more of is a business mentality, not a let's move money around, what can we borrow from this to pay that. We have to look at spending. We, have, we don't have a, a revenue problem in this, in this commonwealth. We have a spending problem. Instead of every time a budget comes up, how are we going to find more money for it? We need to simply look at cuts and eliminating waste. Okay, well then let's talk about how we're going to do it. Everybody agrees it is a very difficult economy. Highest rate of unemployment, in many, many years. Difficult budget session for the next governor and the next legislators are going to have a horrible time balancing that budget. Lisa, how do you do it? What do you want to see happen? Well, look, I've been in office for the last 10 years now, and there has been um, a continuation of just increasing the size of government. And what it has to stop. We need to do um, some business tax cuts, especially the corporate net income tax needs to be decreased the um, capital stock and franchise tax, all these things make it very um, uncompetitive for Pennsylvania when you're competing for jobs, whether it's globally or with your neighboring states, to bring in um, good, solid jobs. And, and businesses are now leaving this state, some of them because of the anti-tax uh, anti climate we have, but some of them are leaving um, because our, our students are graduating, there's no good job opportunities for them. Our electric bills are rising even though our big corporate, corporate electric companies are making record profits. Their tax, the, ta the uh, electric bills that they're paying are going higher and higher and some businesses are deciding now just to leave based on that alone. Coupled with the fact that we have so many municipalities in this commonwealth and we need to think about consolidation because one of the things the business community does say is that with all these different taxing jurisdictions, it's so hard to operate here in Pennsylvania. And these are the things that we need to address. Matt, you talked in your opening remarks about the tax climate and that it seems, in your opinion, to be anti-business. What would you do to make it more pro-business, to attract jobs? And you know, that's the ultimate thing, that we get more jobs here. Well, the reason taxes are so high is the budget requires it. The budget has to be filled. There is a balanced budget, budget amendment in Pennsylvania. So what happens when, when the budget is, is short, as it usually is, the governor, the state senate, the, the house says, let's raise taxes. Unfortunately, what you're really doing, government, when they raise taxes, they're not helping anybody. They're not, they're not creating a business climate. Instead of having a welcome mat on the front door of Pennsylvania, we're basically having a do not enter sign or a caution could be hazardous to your business health. What we need to do is find ways to cut waste, because there's plenty of that. I'll give you a simple example. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, how about some examples? That's the well, hard part. Okay. Every, so many social services are important to people. They're important, but, but listen to this, though. How do you cut? 83% of the budget is the Department of Public Welfare and Education. 83%. That's a lot. Uh, the Democratic um, Auditor General said that there's a 14% error rate, error rate in, in the Department of Public Welfare. That's $800 million. That, that's never been examined. That's never been flushed out to see where that's going. $800 million is a lot of money. We need to make it more business friendly uh, in a number of ways. Now, if you can't lower taxes right away, you can make it less expensive for them to be here. We, we sit on top of a huge natural gas 
find the Marcellus Shale Formation. Big debate right now. It, how it, it, how it is a big debate. Regulate that. Well, think about it. If you were sitting on top of, of the Saudi Arabia of Pennsylvania, and you could say to businesses, okay, our taxes might be a little high right now, but why don't we give you the lowest energy costs, the lowest electric costs that, that you will have in this state versus any other state you might move to? Then they will be able to cut their overhead, and government is an overhead just like utilities are. And with that, you'll, you'll be able to rehire a dormant workforce. We have a wonderful workforce in Pennsylvania, many of whom are, are not working right now because there's no jobs. We could rehire them. We would grow the tax base. The taxes that they pay and the money they spend will increase the base. And that, that's one way to do it. The problem Lisa. with that is when you're talking about Marcellus Shale, the debate now is whether or not we're going to tax these companies. And the governor and Republican and Senate House and, and Senate members, they want to be able to tax the Marcellus Shale, the gas industry, with a lot of that money going into the general fund because they know going into next year that we're going to have about maybe two to five billion dollars that we have to make up. I say we cut spending and you reduce the size of government, but they want to, here it is again, they want to add another tax. And I don't believe that we should be taxing this industry now, especially when it's in its infancy. My, my concern is this is so new. We haven't learned from when we did mining and, and timber. You know, we have acid, rain, acid mine drainage going into our streams. We're still spending millions of dollars to clean up something that we should have learned 10 years ago. Now we're talking about another industry, and I'm so worried that if we, they, we dive into this so quickly, for instance, there's 15 wells right now that they're drilling. We have almost 800 violations, and this industry hasn't even proliferated yet. So everybody, why they want to tax Marcellus Shales because they want the money to go into Harrisburg, kind of what I've been talking about. The first thing that government always tries to do, and it's not only state governments, federal governments, school districts, local governments, is think of a way to raise revenue when we should be thinking about how to cut spending. So they want to tax Marcellus Shale, but they don't even want to put it into the areas that it should be. If you are going to tax it, then this should go into environmental protection. Because if something happens, and we've seen it across this country, when you start drilling and, you do, and the fracking process occurs, there are streams down river that can be polluted for life. And so when you're thinking about Marcellus Shale and taxing it, it should mostly go into environmental protection, DEP, Fish and Boat Commission, and to the local communities that are going to be impacted by this drilling. It's major. And if I had to think of one thing, I mean, beyond, beyond job creation that's so critical right now is to do the drilling, the natural gas drilling, smartly. How do you cut, then? If you want to cut the budget, where might be a few things that you think we well, have Well, one room? of my disappointments has been we never cut the corrections budget. It is. We, they talk about cutting education, they talk about other programs, but never corrections. I found out that there are prisoners that even though they're not working, get idle pay, right, for doing nothing. There are people out there that are struggling every day, working two or three jobs. You don't see them getting idle pay. There are, if you're a prison inmate, you can get, I think it's 10 stamps a month. That's, you're paying for that. That's taxpayers paying for that. Why? You know, they're incarcerated. There's certain things that we can do in our prison system. What I would do is say, across the board, you need a 2 to 3% cut. And you tell the department heads, you're getting your, your department cut by 5%. You live within that cut. You'll find a way. Because I know every department at every government level can find a way to cut 5%. Then we won't have to raise any taxes. Let's talk property tax. It's been an issue that has been near and dear to your heart. You've worked very hard. Do you think we've done enough? No. And what was really disappointing, and he was, that about eight years ago, I was the only one, the first person in the history of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to force a governor into a special session. And I forced him into it on property tax relief. The then Governor Schweiker didn't want to have anything to do with it. It's a very complicated issue, and unfortunately, he wouldn't move further ahead on it. But look, we can't sustain paying for our schools the way we're paying for them now, this heavy reliance on school property taxes. It's so unfair. And, but the lawmakers in Harrisburg are afraid to tackle this issue because if you, say, eliminate property taxes altogether and go to a different type of tax base, I guess what they're afraid of is somebody's gonna, somebody, like somebody running against you is probably going to say, 
oh, well, she raised this tax or that tax, but they're not going to talk about how you eliminated one. When you have a certain amount of people, just small amount of people paying one tax, it, it puts a heavy burden on those people who are paying, especially senior citizens. But if you go to something else much broader, and, you, and a lot of people pay into the system, they pay a lot less. So there's a lot of things we can do here. It's um, something that I will never give up on. And because of my we leadership in Harrisburg, they are... We are we are tackling this, and there's bills there every day in Harrisburg. Matt, what do you think? Property tax reform? How well, do you do it? What's your thought? I remember 2002 when Senator Boscola had a billboard, and it said, "Elect me, and I will eliminate property taxes." That was 2002. Didn't happen. Uh, she also said she's never voted for a ta uh, tax increase. Although in that proposal of hers, it did increase the personal income tax, it did increase the sales tax, and it did create a new tax on business that didn't exist before. So, not voting for one or proposing one, I'm not sure what, what's worse. But I okay, since you made that, that, she has to have I, an opportunity. Because to. I did not, there was no bill that I had to increase personal income taxes or sales taxes or anything like that. And I am, and you'll learn this in Harrisburg. Once you're, you're one of 50, and then in in the House of Representatives, 203 members. In order to get a bill passed, you need half of the, well, 50% plus one of your House and 50% plus one of your senators to get a bill passed, and then the governor has to sign. The governor at the time, when I talked about property tax relief, he wanted nothing to do with it. And there's nothing that I can do except push and push every day that I'm in Harrisburg, I get up on the Senate floor and I talk about this, okay. uh, you'll learn understood. in Harrisburg I, that I, it, it's a difficult situation, right. but what are, would you specifically do to improve property tax, the property tax situation? Well, the, the big inequity of property tax in general is that you rent your land from the state. You can pay your house off, a lot of the seniors have this problem. They've, they've, they bought their homes years and years ago, they paid them off, they're living there, but if they don't make their property tax payments, they can lose it at a sheriff's sale. And that, that's, that's renting your land from the house. You don't really own it at that point. So there's an, equi an inequity there. What we have to do is shift it from being a property tax-based funding to a consumption type of funding. That's where I believe Marcella, Marcella Shale is so important. We have, we're sitting on a natural resource. Uh, your, your question earlier about should we tax them, tax them, tax them. Well, the average uh, uh, well, gas well, will produce gas for 38 years, okay? And it's, and it's an asymmetrical bell curve, which means it'll, it'll start slow, it rises really quickly, and then it tails off. Um, so what you want to do is not tax them up front. It's a, it's a capital intensive uh, a project to, to start fracking and things like that. Then you need to let them establish themselves. And once they start producing the gas, then you need to have a progressive tax so you can get the revenue from that. We need to shift it from property tax to industry tax to natural resource tax, things like that. And we need to cut government because that's a huge, huge, huge savings right there. You know, time disappears so quickly when you get talking politics, so it's time for our closing comments. Matt, I want to give you the opportunity to look at the viewers at home and tell them why should they vote for you. Well, thank you, Amy. Well, why should you vote for me? I'm a new guy. I am not part of the culture in Harrisburg that has gotten us to basically to the verge of insolvency. Harrisburg is looking to be the first city in the United States that is going to default on its bonds. That's huge. Let me give you a little bit of uh, background. In 1980, Budget for Pennsylvania was $4 billion. Adjusted to today's numbers, that's a little over $10 billion. Yet our last budget was $28 billion to $25 billion in revenues. We do not have an income problem. We have a spending problem. Lisa Boscola, look at the voters and tell them why they should vote for you. Well, in Harrisburg, I've been there for three terms now. I've been that independent voice fighting for the people in the Lehigh Valley and Pocono area. 50% of the time I vote with the Democrats, 50% of the time I vote with the Republicans. It's unheard of in Harrisburg to have that kind of record, and I'm proud of it. I will continue to fight for property tax relief, and um, a good, solid education is something that we have to talk about with our children and creating jobs. I'm focused on helping the people in my community. I've never voted for a tax increase, never voted for a pay increase, never voted for a pension increase. I have a solid, strong record, and I hope you put me back there. Okay, we'd like to thank our guests this evening, Lisa Boscola, our Democratic incumbent, and Matt Conley, the Republican challenger in this district. Thank you so much for your information thank from you. both of you. All right, yeah. cool. Thanks.